Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So, if you hadn't have guessed by the title of this video, or what you can see before you, yes, gonna be doing some tesla ring. And these are the two cores I'm gonna try. I've got this big one here, well, with goodness only knows how many turns of wire. It's actually two pieces of wire put together. There's the join in the middle. I hope when I power this up I don't get plasma spewing out of this little bit right there, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll just put that back like that. Got this other little coil, which I wound from magnet wire. Not sure which one is going to work better. So let's have a look at all the other components. Well, let's uh, have a look at some of the testing gear. Got my meter right here. That's going to be very important for measuring voltages and frequency. Because it has a frequency counter on it. And here's another piece of testing gear right here, although you wouldn't believe it, a fluorescent tube. You'll see what I'm going to do with this later on. And I think you'll be quite amazed. Also, over here on the left, we've got my oscilloscope. Excuse the mess of the place. But you know, this place, never very tidy. And I've got this long piece of wire coming out from one of the inputs. It goes along here and taped onto the wall. So, even if there's no breakout coming from these coils, if the circuit is oscillating, we'll see it on the scope. So, let's have a look at some of the other components we've got here. Well, got the most important part here, the tubes. Now, I'm going to test these one by one. We, over here, we've got a GU50. And this one's a PL500, I think. No, nope, sorry, it's an EL500. Now, I know a guy who knows a guy who says this one will be better for the Tesla coil got three inductors here and I'm only going to use one of these but I don't know which one is going to work best I think this one over I mean I think this one over here is going to work better but now this transformer is not for providing the high voltages I'm just going to say that right away all this transformer is going to do is power up the filaments because the high voltage is going to come from this. And what this is, is a voltage doubler that's going to run directly off the mains. I know, you're saying that's hella dangerous, but I'm called Dude Clem, and I live for danger. To prevent any high current surge when I turn this on, got this little thermistor right here, which is going to be connected in series with the mains, and that will take care of that. Also got a microwave oven capacitor, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And got a couple of other components as well. Got a 10k resistor here, which I made from four other resistors. Needs to be a pretty high wattage, so that's why I've done four high wattage resistors together, because I didn't have a 10k high wattage resistor, so I just made one out of those four resistors there. A 100k resistor, terminal strip just in case I need it and a capacitor to couple the feedback antenna to the rest of the circuit. It's about 2.2 nanofarads. Should be 1 nanofarad, but I don't have a high voltage rated capacitor of 1 nanofarad. So anyway, there's all the parts. So, here you see circuit. I mean, so here you see the circuit that I'm going to do. Um, it's based on this circuit here, except I've added this one microfarad capacitor. Now, this is that microwave oven capacitor that you saw earlier. Decided to put it after the rectifier because I don't want high frequencies going back into that thing and it might perform a little better this way. Except I'm not really sure about the ESR of microwave oven transformers. I mean, microwave oven capacitors. Really not sure about that, so we'll just have to see how it goes. So anyway, over here you can see that voltage doubling rectifier. There's the filament transformer down here. 
And as you can see, the circuit's very, very simple. So the way I think the circuit works is the voltage comes along here, energizes this coil, and then that energizes the feedback antenna, which turns the tube on. So the tube conducts, gunning off the power to the coil. Then, of course, because there's nothing here anymore, we get nothing going to the feedback, so the tube turns off, so it's not conducting anymore. So current can now flow into the output coil again. And the cycle repeats over and over and over again. And as it goes into this coil, the voltage builds up and up and up and up and up. Until it bursts out here in the form of a little streamer. Or a little flame. I've probably confused everybody watching this video, but um, that's basically the circuit. Here's a circuit all built up. And I don't know why, but I've suddenly got another cold. I don't understand it. I go to bed, feeling absolutely 100% okay. And I wake up the next day, even if I get any sleep at all, with a terrible cold. Even if somebody on the other side of the world even thinks they've got a cold, I'll catch it. But anyway, here's the circuit all set up. Got my coil here. My feedback right on the top of it, a breakout point in case we get any breakouts. Now at the moment, getting breakouts is not the goal. Just want to get this thing to oscillate. I'm using the PL or EL, whatever it is, and I'm powering it from my tube power supply. Now this is normally for amplifiers, so it's not a very powerful power supply, so there's no chance of me red plating and destroying this thing. I'm not seeing the filament light up though. No, wait. It is lighting up. Actually, I think there might be some oscillation going on. Oh yeah, yeah, we definitely got some oscillation going on. Except I forgot to connect this wire to my scope. That was a bit stupid of me. But look at this, I can light this bulb wirelessly. Well, this fluorescent light wirelessly. Magic. <laughs> right, okay, dim the lights. You can see now, now I've plugged that antenna into the mic. Oh, the screwdriver's a bit magnetised because that's moving the image on the scope. You can see that the scope is picking up the waveform from this coil, so that's good. If I put my hand near it, we should see the waveform change. Yeah, look at that. Put my hand near. Because I'm adding a little bit of capacitance to the coil when I do that. Okay, well, according to my multimeter, it's 7.47 megahertz. Now, for those of you interested in how I'm measuring the frequency, well, I've only got one wire connected to the meter, and that's going up here to the probe, which is just sitting on that thing on my wall. I thought just before we try this with the GU50, I'm going to try it with the other coil. I hope this hasn't welded itself onto the table. No, it's still good. Okay, so I'm going to turn the power on and we'll see how well it works with this one. I'm going to get my fluorescent tube at the ready. No sign of anything. Oh, okay. Never mind. Just hadn't warmed up. And I can see a little bit of breakout on the pin there. It's not much, but it's there. It looks like this is going to be the coil I'm going to use because the other coil didn't give us any plasma whatsoever. Now if I turn the lights out we should be able to see that a bit better. Again, I've got no idea how the camera's seeing this. Yep, I was going to say something and it's just gone right out of my head. Absolutely completely forgotten what it was I was going to say. Oh yes, yes, I remember we're going to measure the frequency slightly lower with this coil, it's 7.04 megahertz. Let's just see how the frequency changes when I bring my hand near the coil. Goes down to about 5 megahertz. So, this is the coil I'm going to use. Anyway, next test we're going to do is try this with the GU50, see what happens. Okay, now it's time to try it with the GU50. And I think I've killed the autofocus. 
because it is a thing of evil. I've a yes, I've actually found a way to turn that off. Anyway, the only problem we got here is that this power supply here doesn't provide, well, doesn't provide enough filament voltage because this thing was 12.6. So, I'm going to use my homemade power supply to power the filament instead. And I've got no idea whether it can power the current. And if it's not able to, I am going to shoot myself because I'll have lost all hope in living. Okay, so I'm going to turn my scope on so I can see any waveforms that might appear. Turn on my power supply. And we might just as well use this quill because this is the one that worked the best. So I'm just going to wait for that to warm up and then I'm going to turn the power on and we'll see what we get. Alright, that should be enough. Let's turn the power on now. Okay, already, I can already see a waveform on the scope. I hope I'm pointing the camera at the right bit here. Seeing any breakout though, which is kind of weird. I would actually get more with this one. Yeah, it's definitely oscillating. Might just need to coax it into starting. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So I'd say the results are about the same. Let's see how this looks in the dark. draw a little arc off that. Wasn't able to do that with the other two. I'm going to see if I can measure the filament voltage. See how much my power supply is struggling with this. Now I've got my meter here. I'm just going to connect that. That's my power supply's output and just see what we've got here. Because I've got this set to 13 volts right now. I'm having a really hard time actually measuring the voltage. Just need to get my pins in there. Actually, this is a, doesn't seem to be struggling too much. I'm getting about 13.8 volts into the filament. Now it should be 12.6, but that little bit of extra voltage isn't going to hurt it. Okay, everybody. I'm going to do this on the ratified mains now. No idea if it's going to work. Alright, I'll stop doing a cool blue lights impression and get on with this. I've replaced that great big power supply with the mains rectifier. Well, the mains doubling rectifier. And some of you might be curious as to why I've used four capacitors instead of two capacitors. Well, I don't have any capacitors of the voltage rating, so what I've done is I've paired two together. So I've got two paired together here two paired together there, and I've got resistors connected across them so we don't get one capacitor more charged than the other one. But apart from that, it's the same circuit. Also add a mains filter here, because I really don't want any of that nasty stuff getting back into the mains. That's mainly what that's there for. Anyway, I've got the, got the filament warmed up. I'm using all of this resistor here, because before I was just using two resistors, now I've got the all four resistors in series. Also got a fuse out here. There's a microwave oven fuse, slow blow fuse. There's the plug. I'm going to plug this in. Don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. Well, uh, it did do something. And then it stopped. I don't know if I've damaged my tube, I wouldn't think so. I don't know, maybe this fuse blew. Does it fuse? Yeah. Oh yeah, that fuse blew, that's what's going I have to use a more better fuse. Alright, so, I've replaced that fuse. Well, what I've done is I've just wrapped a lot of wire around it. Because I'm too much of a lazy ass to actually go out and find another fuse. And if that blows, I'm going to replace it with even more thicker wire. I'm going to stuff so much current through this thing. Alright, I'm not going to talk like photonic induction. And by the way, I'm not trying to insult anybody by the impressions. Think of it more as a, a homage. Or a tribute. Anyway, like I said, I am really lazy. So instead of going and finding some other fuser to use, I've just gone... 
wrap some thin wire around that, although I don't know if you can make that out. You can see it there. So that's the new fuse. I know what some of you are saying. Cold do plumb, you're gonna burn the house down. You're gonna kill yourself. Shut up. So let's see how this other fuse handles it. Okay. We're not getting anything. I don't know why. Let me plug it in. I don't know if this fuse has gone as well. Let me just test that, make sure that one hasn't blown too. I don't think it would have, but still. Let's just see if this fuse is alright. No, it appears this one has blown too. So it's blown both fuses. Well, I guess that's the end of this experiment. It was a bit of a fail. I'm kind of at a loss for words now and don't know what to do. Yes, even the best of us fail sometimes. So until next time, goodbye. Did you really think I was just gonna give up? Without even trying to find the problem, I decided to try running it from an isolation transformer that I knocked together. Turn it on. Within a few seconds, this transformer got pretty warm. Which is not supposed to happen. So I went along with my multimeter, tried to find some problems, see if anything was shorted. And yes, there is definitely something shorted. This diode right here. I think we exceeded the voltage of this diode. And it blew. It's completely shorted. Or as Heavy would say. This put so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick some proper diodes on there. And then we'll see what happens. Guys! It's working! As you can probably see. Anyway, I can't run that for too long because these resistors here to power the second grid, they do get rather warm. Actually, that could probably run for a little longer than that. Okay, I'm just about to wrap this video up for now because I'm sure it's dragged on for far too long. Waffling on like I normally do. Now I've done some experimenting with various different output coils and various different inductors. And I found out that you really need to match your inductor to your output coil. So what I've decided on is making a variable inductor, which you can see here. It's just a ferrite rod with a coil of wire wrapped around it. I'm still not getting very much output, but it is adjustable. So I'm just going to show you how well this works as a proof of concept. And then when I've gone and edited this video, I'm going to work on a much better inductor that I can adjust for whatever coil I'm using. And that will be really good. So I'll just plug this in. Alright, so that is on. And you can see waveform on the oscilloscope. And I've got my variable inductor here. I can pull. Now this is just a coil of wire wound around a ferrite rod. I can pull the ferrite rod in and out and change the inductance. And on the scope, right. you can see the waveform get bigger and smaller when I do that. So, so I'm going to make a much better tunable inductor or variable inductor so I can get much more output out of the coil and anyway that's going to be in another video because I'm sure this is getting long enough already so yes as I always say until next time goodbye